Hi everyone, so today I'm going to be doing a Fred McDowell uh, lesson on uh, his version of My Babe. And this song is in Vestipole tuning, so make sure you get your guitar into Dad F sharp A D, Dad Fad tuning. <laughs> you'll need your slide for this song, so I've got my glass slide here. Um, I just want to make a quick note and um, thank everyone who participated in the contest. Um, I'm referring to the video that I made previous to this one. Uh, uh, to those who participated, I'm, I, I really appreciate it. And basically what I did to pick out who got the free video lesson, I made a list of everyone in a notepad document and associated you with a number. So, uh, John Smith, a, or John Smith, number one, and going down the list, two, three, four, five, six, seven, etc. And then I went on to Google and I just um, did a random number generation between one and however many people participated. And the number came out to be three, so I just went to the third person down on the list and uh, he suggested this song but once again I'd like to thank everyone who who uh, was involved um, uh, yeah very appreciate very grateful um, for that so this is a really cool song and there are lots of uh, cool moves in this one so what I'm going to do is just go through the song once and then get into the lesson So that's really the song. Um, we'll start with the groove. Um, basically what he does there is the right hand work is an alternating bass with your thumb. And then a little strum sweep up with your pointer finger. So it's really like this. That doesn't really sound like the groove yet, and this is why. Um, what he'll do is on the slide, he'll put the slide over the third fret, and uh, strum up. Let me make sure this is all clear, but like... So that's the alternating bass. And then with that sweep up, what you do is you rest the slide over the third fret, and you strum up from the B string up through the G string and the D string. Second, third, and fourth strings. Like that. And then you just pull off with the slide. And pulling off with the slide is really easy, because for some reason it just comes off really easily. So you go like this. Just lift the slide off, really, and then it'll pull off automatically. So, once again, alternating bass, and come back down, and then pluck up, second, third, and fourth strings on the third fret, and then pull off. And then you just repeat. Actually, in the song, you see uh, him playing in one of the YouTube videos, the song, uh, he doesn't really emphasize this as much, it's kind of quiet actually, it's more like this. So, uh, I guess, yeah, 
um, take some time to check into what kind of dynamics you want to play. Last thing I'll say about this groove, actually second last thing, is that he'll actually start it not like this. He'll start it like this. So the only thing that's different is the starting note. And what he does is he slides into the third fret of the fifth string. And then plays the octave, um, the part two of the alternating bass. So slide into the third fret of the fifth string and then go, go into the open fourth string. And then continue with the alternating bass. And then play the little So once again, slide in, then just go into normal stuff. Last thing I'll say is that sometimes he'll alt, he'll change it up um, more towards the end of the song, and instead of plucking from the two second string up through the third and fourth strings like this, he'll just pluck the top string. Um, up through the second, third, and fourth. So it sounds more like this. So you've got that option too. So I think that fully covers the groove. Um, now we can get into the lead stuff that he does. So we'll just focus on the top two, this really all um, focuses on the top two strings. Although sometimes the third string gets involved too. Let's say when you're doing slides like this, it kind of includes the G, the third string. Just part of that messy sound, I guess. But anyways, it starts out like this. So that's really just sliding into the fifth fret of the second string. Uh, twice. And then you slide into the third fret of the top string, and then pull off. The way I do that is I slide, slide into the note, then when I'm ready to pull off, I just, just pull the slide down. That means you kind of slide over the fret a bit, by that, but by that, it happens so fast you don't really notice. Um, then you slide into the 5th fret, again with a lot of vibrato, and I've talked a lot about vibrato technique in my earlier videos, but you want to plant your thumb roughly behind the slide, roughly, but just wherever is comfortable, and then from there just shake your wrist back and forth, and then your thumb becomes kind of the uh, fulcrum, so that your, your shoulder doesn't have to do all the work. Throw in a lot of vibrato there. And then go down to the fifth fret, then pull, then play the open string, or you can pull off. I pull off, I guess. And then slide back into the third fret, and then play an open string, and then another open string, and then slide into the fifth fret. Just some other notes about slide technique. Make sure you don't damp the strings behind the slide because without damping the strings you get all those like more gnarly extra sounds that I think are pretty important for his sound. Number two would be when you do make these slides, he does these really like fat slides. I might be overemphasizing it a bit, but to get a kind of bigger sliding sound. Um, it's, I think, good practice to, like, say you're getting into the 7th fret. You start out fast as you're approaching the 7th fret from far away. Then once you start getting close, you slow down. It's almost, it sounds like a car revving its engine. So it's almost like you never even get to the 7th fret. Alright, and it, it kind of gives a bigger sound. And, um, third thing.
thing that I'd say is make sh uh, well, he doesn't necessarily do this every time, but I think it kind of makes it sound more legit. Um, if you pluck these notes in motion, meaning like you pluck these these uh, top string or like lead notes in general as the slide is moving, um, just to like give the the bad extreme. If you don't do that, it sounds more like this. And you kind of lose the whole effect of the slide, whereas if you pluck them as the slide is moving... You get all those... You get all those in-between pitches and the sound of the string almost like bending, or the notes bending as you're playing them. So it's just something to keep in mind. Anyway, so that's part one of the lead line, and then the next part goes like this. Uh. That, that happens by going into the 7th fret of the top string, and then the 10th fret, and then the 12th fret. And I should, I guess, add that after the 10th fret, you can, again, do another pull-off into the open string. And then go into the 12th fret. When you slide into the 12th fret, you only need to go from 11 to 12. And then slide back down to the 11th on the third time you pluck it. You hear me slide down to the 11th, hopefully. And then, now that your slide's over the 11th fret, you can slide into the 12th fret of the 2nd string. Sliding into the 11th from the 12th of the top string, and then going into the 12th of the 2nd string. Let me just make sure this is still on. Sweet. Battery's kind of low. Um, anyways, so um, in the actual video, the way he plays it, he goes like this. So he goes down to the 7th fret to play that, but I think it's a lot easier to play it on the 12th fret, right below on the 2nd string. And I should just note that he plays the groove once after that. Um, but anyways, uh, as you heard there, the next thing, so this is what we've got so far. plays the groove four times. And then he does what I just uh, was talking about. And then the groove once. And then he does this. Yeah, it's really just a bunch of plucks off 12th fret of the top string, and then slide down. And then he does this. So that's going into the 5th fret of the top string, and then sliding down to about the 4th fret, and then into the 7th fret. Back to the fifth, open, pull off, and then into about the third-ish fret, third-ish, fourth-ish fret. So five, four, seven, five, third-ish, fourth-ish. 
And remember there are just like open string pull-offs in between. Wherever you kind of feel that it's right to do it, they're almost like to fill in the cracks um, between the lead notes. And or just um, a way to kind of vary it each time you play the line, just a different place that you drop the open string pull-offs. And then this is where it just finishes. So sliding into the fifth fret of the second string, and then the seventh fret of the top string, back to the fifth fret of the top string, open, thirdish, fourthish fret, into the thirdish, fourthish fret, and then finishing on the fifth fret of the uh, second string. Uh, sorry. So that last bit will go. Uh, well, I'll show it from here. That's just all the 12th fret stuff that he comes down and does. So you can kind of vary, I guess. 5, 4, 5, 4, 5. Finish it up, finishes it off. And there. And there are all sorts of ways that you can really get into the root. You can do this like open string and then sliding into the fifth fret of the uh, second string. So open string of the top string and then sliding into the fifth fret of the same note on the second string. go two into the fifth fret of the second string. So there's like this, or there's this. So there's just different ways to play it, I guess. A um, couple other notes that I'll just say is that sometimes he'll play the lead line a bit on this fourth and fifth strings. Uh, Sometimes, like, just, there are different parts, right? There's, or at least, well, if you split it up, or the way we've split it up, I guess there are different parts, like, beginning part. Sometimes when he plays the lead line, he'll drop in like open string bottom notes and stuff. He doesn't really play like an alternating bass underneath the lead line, but sometimes he'll just drop a root just to like support everything. That's um, pretty much the lesson. Uh, thank you very much for the suggestion to do this song, and again for everyone who participated in the uh, contest. Um, I'm really grateful for you guys. And uh, if you've got any questions about this song, please let me know. Um, until next time. Thanks.